All right. Finally got away from all the crowds out at 11. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> the kids aren't out. We were just talking about how the kids aren't out. Where are the kids? Like, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, anyway, I should, maybe I should start off with uh, saying that this is definitely one of the last ones we're going to do for a while. Well, I, I, it's hard to say that we're going to be away for again for a while when we will never get <laughs> <really laughs> <been> back. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And yeah. You know, so, th- life gets in the way. It is yeah, what yeah. it is. But, you know, I think you should break news to them because it's uh, it's your trip, right? Yeah. It feels like the end of Fast and Furious, uh, let's say, number four. Number four. <laughs> <I don't know>. <laughs> <laughs> One last ride. <laughs> and then there's going to be like five other ones. Yeah, <laughs> yeah hopefully, right? Yeah. yeah. But, uh, you know, a couple years ago, I was all like, I want to move to Hong Kong. It's going to be great. And then, and then, then I, China came rolling in yeah. and just said, yo, man, this is our trip now. Yeah. So I came back as soon as I could, and then I really kind of found a home here. I felt for the first time, well, very recently, I, I started feeling, after I did the whole drive down to Alberta looking to see if I wanted to move there, and then after doing a bunch of research online about other uh, tax haven islands, I've... Cayman Islands. <laughs> <and stuff, laughs> Cayman right? I, yeah. I finally settled on, hey, I'm good, right? I uh, found a, a church community that I like here. You found Jeebus. Uh, yeah. All my friends are here, actually. And uh, this is a good place to raise my kid, you know, if I homeschool. So I was good. I was in a good place. But then... Um, yeah, like if you homeschool, I mean, like the Rainbow Rex got a tight grip on the education system yeah. but for at least, I think, another 20 years. Yeah. Hey, do you remember, actually, when you went to elementary school here, did they teach you sex ed in second grade? No, I had to learn that myself by watching pay-per-view. Okay. <laughs> like, Did you pa- watch the the scrambled screen? The, <laughs> no, it's like it's actually my pa- uh, we the kids nowadays have no idea what the fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> it's, it's okay. It's okay, uh, uh, Gen Z. You, 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 you'll never have the adventures we do, but you know, porn is easy for you to get. You don't have to like, you know, shoplift for your porn like we did. But we did learn a valuable life skill. Which was <laughs> <doesn't matter. laughs> um, so, but yeah, um, yeah. Now that I don't want to go to Hong Kong, I'm being called to go back to Hong Kong. Uh, my father-in-law is not well. He's getting better. He's he's a lot better than we thought he was a few weeks ago. But uh, we're gonna go back and see him. We're gonna go back and take care of him. It's a, uh, it's good. It's you know. He, he's ha- he's lived a difficult life, kind of, so it's good to kind of spend some time with him. I guess, uh, I don't know, I feel, it makes you feel good as a Christian to do, I guess. I don't know. Like, well, that, that's... I, an, I'm not a Christian, I wouldn't know. <laughs> well, one of the things about uh, being Christian is you want to show love, right? You want to... Well, you want to honor your, your father and your mother, too, but you also want to be a loving brother in Christ, right? And so there was this whole kind of internal debate that I had. It's like... Because Hong Kong is still pretty strictly locked down. Worse than just locked down, like, there's a political lockdown. There's that too, yeah. yeah. So there's a lot of reasons why I wouldn't want to go to Hong Kong. But at the end of the day, uh, you know, love for my father-in-law and this kind of familial duty kind of supersedes that by a mile. Well, at the very least, yeah, I don't think we're big enough to, for you to get you dragged off to the gulag if they find out you, ha- uh, you have a channel like uh, uh, yeah. like and, ours. And to be honest... Um, my viewpoints nowadays are more critical of America than the CCP even is. I'm more anti-American than those mofos. So uh, I don't know. Like, I don't think. I don't think. Uh, I don't think Xi Jinping cares. Yeah. We're, like when and who doesn't give a shit? He'll, yeah. he'll, he'll kick your ass. <laughs> but yeah. Um, do you have anything you want to say for the for the last ride, or should I start first? Uh, well, I think you should start first. Okay. I think so, uh, you know, like you always want to end off with a bang, and like uh, you know, as as always, I'm a bit, I'm the more exciting one. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that we're here, sitting in a park like with rabbits running around, while we try to avoid the water fountain noise and the airplanes going. Yeah, it was tough to find a quiet spot actually. <laughs> but you know, uh, certainly I've been thinking back. You, know, you reminisce, I reminisce. So some people do know that about the family situation that I'm in, and they've reached out and said some kind words, right? But one person in particular pointed something out to me that I thought was interesting, but he's kind of partially correct on this, in that I had lost joy doing what I do on YouTube. 
which is true actually. Um, over the kind of last few years, I did lose a certain kind of joy that we initially had because I, I go back and I watch the videos where I'm sitting in my basketball shorts, we're in the living room, we're talking about this argument I had on Facebook. And, you know, there was something pure about that that kind of I did lose sense of, I think. Well, I think, um, I guess that would be the case because I think w when we first started doing the videos, one thing I said was, you know, like, I don't care what we talk about, but we have to have fun. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, if we can't have fun, then how do we, how do we do the, uh, do the show? Like, the show is about fun. <laughs> like, sure. uh, the, the show is about having fun talking about even the worst of uh, worst situations yeah if you can't do it you can't do it is yeah. it is what it is yeah but um you know i think the, the on the other hand he's like well why don't you just go back to that you know shit posting and that kind of thing and it's this is because people who know me know that it's kind of not in my nature i guess well that is what i'll say about <laughs> yeah you. like that's uh I'll let you finish uh, finish yeah. it off. So uh, just to pretend you're right, but you know, like, <laughs> uh, you're not like me. You know, yeah. I'm a static person. Yeah, uh, I'm the same man I was, what like five six years ago mm. when we first started the show. Yeah, and five six years ago I was the same man I was back in 2008 when I first joined the culture war. Yeah, I'm not a man who changes. It's yeah. like ten years from now I'll still be the same man, and thirty years from now I'll still be the same man. And I definitely had a very opposite trajectory because yeah. I entered the culture war during Gamergate. And be prior to that, I, I had no idea what, was, what, what any of that was about. Go into culture war, then go into libertarianism, then go into other philosophies, post-libertarianism. Well, like, you, uh, you have to take into account all, all, the, uh, all the strange, like, weird shit you, uh, you told me you were into like that. Let, let, I, I won't embarrass you by telling people on the show about... Like, but you you change constantly. Yeah, not always for the best. Uh, sure. Yeah, I mean that whole thing with the perennialism and the occult stuff was 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 the wrong turn. It was a wrong turn, but it's actually a very common wrong turn that a lot of people take before going to orthodoxy. Actually, you'll be surprised. Well, that <laughs> wasn't wasn't what I was talking about. I was actually talking about like how I think you went into the time cube or something. Like it was something weird. The something time cube. Uh, like you told me about this weird thing you used to be into, like, oh, the f Venus movement. Oh, I, okay, well, if yeah. you're willing to admit it. Uh, no, well, I've said that. Yeah, I, I've, I've yeah. Said so, that. like, yeah. you know, you have you get get into these stages in your life, yeah. and they're, they're not always. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm not talking about the occultism. I was talking about the Venus Project yeah. thing. Is like they're not always sane. Yeah. But you do change a lot. Yeah. Well, uh, so I. One of the first people that I met at church, you know, they ask you, like, where do you come from, right? What brings you here? And I, I, I start telling him about these things. And then he's like, I know exactly who you are. You're a seeker. Is that position in, like, Quidditch or something? Yeah. So I'm the guy who scores all the points and scores all the chips. I don't know. Uh, hold on, hold on. Airplane. <laughs> no, actually, Harry Potter, for the record, doesn't get the chips. I don't know. I, and let's not get into that. <laughs> <laughs> So, I, so, well, I definitely wanted to, you know, I, I was coming across new ideas, right? I definitely wanted to talk about different things. Our show became very much about libertarian politics, and that was the thing that I kind of wanted to move away from. So, I think, uh, uh, well, I think you had a misunderstanding because, you know, it's the way I view the show, it's just something I did with my friends, something fun. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we could really talk about anything as long yeah. as we keep it fun. Yeah. Uh, I was there to just kind of shit post w uh, with my mouth, so to uh, trash talk. I'm just there to trash talk. Yeah, that's all. That's all I do. That's all I ever do. And um, as long as it stays fun, I could really talk about anything. Doesn't necessarily have to be libertarian sure. politics, yeah. though. I am still a libertarian. Yeah. And yeah, that's the other thing is that I didn't really know how it was going to be fun yet. The new things that I was learning about. So yeah, on the one hand, the, the show was to have fun. But on the other hand, the show was also an interest, right? It was what I was interested, you know. I felt like you were getting burnt out at the end. I was too, I, I, and we did episodes about that as well, where I was like, oh, I don't want to do a video every week. Uh, the other thing I was getting burnt out on, though, was also internet culture. Because at the time, I started getting burnt out after I started the Discord, actually. 
I think that was kind uh, of the, the moment. Much pressure? I don't know. It was nice actually when I didn't have any kind of duty to to Moderate. interact with the audience. Yeah, it's kind of... Because then I could keep a separation between my real life and then just the show. Once it kind of got into the community stuff, it really took a toll on me, actually. Did, uh, did it take any toll on you when, you know, like uh, a few years ago, that, like random people just came up to, to us and said, like, hey, you're, you're so-and-so? <laughs> no, not really. It's weird. Mm-hmm. I, was, uh, I, was in, uh, I was in Best Buy sh- uh, trying yeah. to find my mom a new alarm clock. Yeah. And... Uh, Two people came up to me and just yeah. say, "Hey, your 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 uh, your bill from like Asian capitalists." Yeah. I'm like, "Yeah, like," uh, and they're like, uh, "My mom's like, what 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 are they talking about?" I'm like, "Oh, it's just a thing." I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and th- and they're like, "Oh no, no, he's kind of a big deal." I'm like, "No, I'm not. It's fine." <laughs> <laughs> Did your mom start to get worried at that point? No. <laughs> Actually, recently I got recognized at church too. Really? Yeah. What uh? Cool. <laughs> uh, tell me about it. How how did it happen? Yeah. Because, you know, like, it's different when people who actually interact with you on a regular basis. Yeah, 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 because, yeah, we, we talk every week now. Um, well, there is this internet revival. Well, I shouldn't say internet, but it, it starts on the internet. There is a revival of orthodoxy right now in America and Canada. And it comes because Jonathan Pajot and Jay Dyer, the two prominent figures on the internet right now that is drawing people towards orthodoxy. I have no idea who people these people are, but you know, like let, let's just pretend. That someday, I know. maybe someday. <laughs> uh, hey, don't you go to ironhrarchive dot com? Come on. Uh, yes, of course I do. <laughs> <laughs> Look, uh, I, I barely even watched the videos. I was I was in myself. Yeah, like, yeah. um, so people from our kind of broad internet circle are seeking out Orthodox Christianity. And then one guy, he recognized me, and then after the service, he's like, I like your videos, man. Uh, you mentioned there was, like, you know, a huge, like, schism about uh, what people who wanted to move on and people who wanted to, like, keep doing what they're doing. You mean in terms of shit posting? Yeah. Yeah, kind of, yeah. I don't see how there's, like, there should be a debate. I mean, Porky lost those, right? Like, Porky what? Por- Porky lost those. You, you know, like, Spanish, why not both? <laughs> yeah okay I got, I got you <laughs> just because you want to move on with your life and you know I, I don't know like uh, get married I have 2.5 kids a dog and a cat a house with a white picket fence and, yeah. and then join a church doesn't mean you can't just go online and shit post well yeah it doesn't mean that and certainly certainly there's a lot of impacts actually that that schism happened in our discord community I think you, you mentioned something about it last yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, well, it's kind of, it's pretty complicated because it's, it wasn't just that, but man, there was so much to deal with on Discord for a while where... <laughs> You've seen some shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there were some people who got the impression that just because we started a reading group in our Discord, right? We got interested in some things, right? Nerds. Yeah. But people got the impression that just because we were reading things that were kind of serious, that we became serious people. But that's actually... Not really the case. We still joked around a lot in book club. But I think what really drove the the schism was that there were some people who were feeling left out. Because uh, how so, yeah. I'm talking about these, you know, Christianity. I'm talking about like Luciferianism. I'm talking about even at that time it wasn't even popular to talk about World Economic Forum. I was talking about World Economic Forum back then. And people were like, you know, you fucking conspiracy theorists, you you've changed, Jeff, you've changed, get out of here. I think people just had animosity towards. Um, it felt like I was being um, a snob, right? Well, you kind of, kind of are sometimes. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, on the snob thing too, um, I, I recognize this thing that I do, right? But um, you know, people think that I'm some kind of extrovert. I don't know if I give that impression, but people think I'm very socially. You know, I can get along with everybody. Really. And on the internet, they do. I, I give that impression sometimes. But it's okay, actually, well, yeah, we'll, we'll there you, you go. We'll, really, we'll, right? We'll, like, exactly. We'll, we'll let you believe that. In real, in real life, everybody sees that. It's not true. When I hang out with your friends, for your friends from high school, for example. I don't, uh, not, not high school, but my, uh, my group of, my, yeah, closer, yeah, group, yeah. my yeah. closer group of friends. Like, it's very obvious that I can't jump into that world, right? Well, it's, 
I would say the same even when we're out and about. Like, yeah, yeah. Generally, I'm the one like kind yeah. of talking to people, yeah. and you're you're hanging back a lot. Yeah. There's a lot of worlds that I don't really. Maybe that's a snob part. I don't know. But there is a lot a, a side of me that kind of holds back too. But I definitely felt that way about the kind of 4chan world as well, where I was interacting with these people, but I always felt like there was a, a degree of separation. Like I, I was a bit of a stranger in a strange world, kind of thing. You're not a citizen of Kyrgyzstan. Exactly, yeah. And I don't think you'll ever be. Yeah, that one's from uh, 2016, like, yeah. <laughs> 2015, yeah. But yeah, like, I'll never change. I was yeah. one lowbrow and I'll die lowbrow. And yeah. I'll, I think I'll always shitpost, so, you know, yeah. that's who I am. Yeah. I'll always trash talk. So, you know, it is yeah. what it is. Yeah. But, um, so you mentioned you were, well, you, you've been starting a project. My understanding is you're writing a fanfic. <laughs> Uh, well, I feel like I've been starting a project for seven years now. I mean, you know, we were doing a little sh- short film uh, before we did YouTube. Yeah, that never got off <laughs> yeah. the ground. You tried to get me to act. That was, yeah. your, that was your first mistake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Many mistakes were made that night, though. None of yeah. them worth mentioning. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the things that's consistent about my life is that I kind of I fail into success. I always fail at things that I start up, but then somehow I land on something that's even better. And I think the YouTube channel was, in a way, kind of like that. Well, I don't think we expected it to turn out no, in that yeah. direction. <laughs> it was supposed to be a snappy, like, two-minute video. Right. We were going to do own the live videos, two-minute own the live videos, sacred cows. So we were going to slay yeah, the sacred was, cows. Uh, it was supposed to be what lives of TikTok was supposed to be like today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's a good thing, I guess. Yeah. Like, but the tragedy is probably that you never get what you set out to do. Yeah. Whereas, I guess I'm just single-mindedly fighting for, like, what I want still. <laughs> like, it may be getting harder and harder to obtain my uh, the last part of the puzzle that I want with each day. But even if the chances are zero, I don't think I'll ever give up. Yeah. That's just, that's just how I am. But, um... I guess it's my turn. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Are we, uh, are, are we, do we have other stuff to talk about? Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Like, I, uh, when initially we kind of took a break. Yeah. And uh, I think it was 2019, late 2019. Yeah. I think the last time we tried to do a video is like, I wanted to drink Corona beers while we did a Flu, a flu Man Chew video. Yeah, yeah. When the coup first happened. Yeah. We were going to drink Corona beers while talking about the coup. Yeah. You know, work really peaked at the time. I was uh, I was out of it, mm. and you know how I usually perform way worse when we're not meeting in person. Because at the time, you just had the kid. Yeah, and uh, it was inconvenient for me to come by. Mm. The baby was sleeping at random intervals. Well, maybe not. <laughs> well, it was random yeah. to me. Yeah, we all were sleeping at random intervals. <laughs> So it was super inconvenient for me to come by. Yeah. We had to try to remote that one, and it didn't turn out well. Yeah. Uh, and then eventually, you know, like, you, you wanted to start a project. I didn't know what, what it was, but, you know, like, I was busy myself, so, you know, mm. I just, like... Ah, I remember that. Yeah, I was telling you about it back then, even. Yeah. Uh, I think I asked you briefly about it, and you, you tried to explain <clears throat> it, and then realized it was too complex yeah. to do uh, over, over the phone or something, and then, Whoa. like... I was in over my head, to be honest. Um, I'm like the the meme, right? The guy with the conspiracy chart. Yeah. So, yeah. I I was starting my own projects. You know, not I'm not an artistic person. Most of my projects involve myself. Yeah. Uh, most of them went pretty well. Uh, I I think I mentioned before that I'm in a new career now. I yeah. uh, took up boxing. Yeah. Uh, I'm not currently doing it actively, but you know, like once I find a new gym, I'll probably like join it. And um, in terms of the channel, I was um, I was kind of waiting on uh, what your project was mm-hmm. because at the time I kind of had a sense that you you wanted to do something new. Mm, yeah. And um, we didn't really have time to talk, so we uh, it was hard for me to confirm what your intentions are. Yeah. I believe it was very important to um, observe where you were going and try to. In the best case scenario, match where you were going, mm. and in the worst case scenario, not interfere with where you were going. Mm. And then you took like a year and a half to like do anything. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, you know, he, he has a project. Let's see what his project is. You know, like then we'll we'll see. 
we'll see where this goes because this is supposed to be a, a project I do with a friend. Like the worst thing I could do is kind of fuck up his project. <laughs> so wait around yeah. until um, you know you had your thing up. And at that point, I think we both have new things going on in our lives. But I think I mentioned it a couple of times to you. Remember when you gave me the old recorder we used to use? I've actually been working on something, potentially two videos as well, on my own. Nice. I've been busy with other things, so it's not too much progress, but you know, one day I would like to get it out. Mm -hmm. It's on the hot topic of happiness. Okay, sure. Because during coof season, these two year long coof season, I've been talking to the accountant, and I've been mm -hmm. talking to uh, the electrician. Mm -hmm. And they and I have noticed one thing is, uh, I don't uh, fall into the same psychological pitfalls most people fall into, apparently. Like, it was weird, because one time they said, hey, like, do you know about intrusive thoughts? I'm like, what the fuck is that? Like, what is that? I still don't quite get the concept. Apparently, it's when you can't stop thinking about something bad. Okay. Or, like, you know, you can't stop criticizing yourself. Okay. And I'm like, I, 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 I'm a, <laughs> I've never felt that way. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. And in general, I think the, the, the conclusion I came out with Man, no people have it rough. Hmm. Like, they have it really hard. Yeah. Like people deal with this bullshit all the time. <laughs> like, how okay. do they live? <laughs> well, there's a, um, and this might highlight kind of some of the things that I really had trouble talking to a lot of people, like you, but also a lot of other people about uh, for the last number of months. Like, because I'm very new to Christianity. I'm very new to Orthodoxy, right? Okay. So I'm always learning something new every day. So, for example, in this, in the example that you're bringing up, there's a kind of an orthodox way of looking at it, which is that the supernatural has two sources. It's either God or it's the demonic realm. So all of our thoughts don't necessarily belong to us. And there was a guy that I know at my church, actually, who went through something very serious uh, along these lines, where at some point he had a, a voice in his head talking to him, telling him these things that were very delusional and dangerous. But this is one of those things that I felt at the time when I first started my journey into orthodoxy. It was like, how do I talk to Bill about these kinds of things? So that was one of the, th the reasons why I also kind of pulled away because I felt like I couldn't talk about these things. Well, you can look, man. Yeah. With friends, you can always talk about it. It's yeah. just I, I, I don't think I'll ever relate. Yeah, that's that's the thing. There's a, a difficulty there. I don't know, understand why there's, there needs to be a difficulty. Like people talk to other people about things that, that that they'll never understand all the time. Why is it so important that the other person must relate to you if, uh, you, if you have well, fun? If you just ha uh, can have fun talking. Yeah. About well, it. one of the things I didn't want to get into was kind of becoming a, a debate bro, because this happens a lot uh, in online orthodoxy. <laughs> so well, let's put it this things, way. Yeah. I'm calling your original please do not steal orthodoxy theory a fanfic and you're not pissed off at me. We can totally <laughs> have fun about this. Yeah, but you know, for a, for a while at least, I certainly felt like there was a lot of pressure, you know. Well, I think you should just do you. Like, this would not align with Jeebus's teachings, mm -hmm. but you know, I think people should live for themselves and you know, if you think being an orthodox Christian is what will make you happy, then you should definitely do it. Mm -hmm. No, you're right, it doesn't it? Well, why? <laughs> but it's fine. <laughs> um, what were we... Uh... Oh, I was talking about... Uh, uh, I have been working on a video. Yeah. Not, not very regularly, mm. and uh, it's not oh, yeah. close to being done. So what I was actually going to say was that we had this idea before about William T. Science. Yes. Your, that's your yeah. uh, kind of alter ego. Yeah. And we were going to do kind of fun videos where you play Dr. <laughs> T. Science. You know, I was about... I was gonna interview myself. And yeah, then yeah. So I, I would be like Doctor William He signs on one screen, and yeah. then we flash back between, yeah. and then we mix up the outfits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that kind of stuff is where I think, if I'm to say I want to kind of do something a little bit different, I want to explore those kinds of avenues as well. Uh, well, I think why anybody watch any of our videos is we make things fun. Yeah. You know, enough, the... enough people have fun. Yeah. Interestingly, at the time there were a few other channels, Naked Ape. Andy Worski, even Sargon was having fun at that time. And then, maybe around 2018, that was when people were talking about the honk pill. And the honk pill was a fun meme, but it felt like everybody putting on the honk pill mask, but behind it they were like the crying Wojak. This is another thing I don't understand is, uh, 
there was mass burnout yeah, yeah. going on and I was not there like I was not burnt out I was looking at everyone and saying what's going on like you know why can't we just keep doing the same things we were doing we were having so much fun you know it's just because I don't tend to get bored of anything mm -hmm. I was talking to a co-worker <clears throat> recently and they realized the only thing I ever eat is meat they asked me, you know, like, look, if but can you, you eat the same steak every day? Yeah, they asked me that. They're <laughs> like, look, if I'll let you pick anything, like, you know, uh, uh, what, what do you want? I'm like, I want, I want a ribeye steak. I love it, ribeye steaks, <laughs> uh, salt and pepper. I'm a simple man. I don't need like, you know, season this certain way. Just salt and pepper is fine. Salt and pepper is actually the yeah. best seasoning. Yeah, and they're like, okay, well, can you eat that every day? I'm like, of course I can. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Like, it might kill me pretty quickly if I eat it every day, but I can most definitely eat that every day. Yeah. Well, to continue with that analogy, because I recently moved on from ribeye steak, well, primarily towards tenderloin steak. Okay. And I'd gotten a bit bored, sure, but this new thing was so much more interesting to me. And so I couldn't go back. But, you know, I think after six months of tenderloin steak... I can finally look back and say, okay, I can have ribeye sometimes and tenderloin sometimes. So maybe that's kind of the analogy that suddenly there was this, you know, big movement towards what people call neo reaction, right? Neo reaction was tenderloin, and people were like, we gotta go to tenderloin now, right? Yeah, but you know, like. Uh, but, they, but they didn't know how to enjoy tenderloin. So they were eating tenderloin very seriously, and they didn't know how to be chill about it. Uh, yeah, well, I think just based on who I am. Mm -hmm. I'm not susceptible to boredom, so I could just eat uh, ribeye all the yeah. rest of my life. I, yeah. I, I would be happy. And I didn't really get why people needed to go seek out this knowledge. Tenderloin is good, man. <laughs> Sometimes it's not that we seek out the novelty, but the novelty finds us. Um, I'm not against tenderloin. I like, uh, it's, a, it's also a cut type of meat. Yeah. <laughs> but if... Um, if I'm eating ribeye and it tastes just fine, yeah. I wouldn't like purposely go out and buy a tenderloin in lieu of a ribeye. <laughs> you do you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's interesting. You look at the YouTube landscape right now, like in 2022, uh, it's completely different. Well, one thing that happened though, and I, I don't blame any YouTuber for doing this because live streams happened, right? Live stream became a really big thing in the last couple of years. It's extremely profitable. It's extremely easy to do. Plenty of right-wing YouTubers rely on live stream to make their money. Their whole income comes from live stream, from Super Chats. So I can't really fault anybody. But at the same time, it's become three-hour, four-hour live streams. The whole lands YouTube landscape has become three, three four-hour <coughs> uh, live streams. So yeah, no, ain't nobody got time for that, is what you're saying. And with live streams... You, certainly there can be fun live streams, but you can't... It's hard to keep up, keep the, it, yeah. uh, keep up the energy for three hours yeah. at a time. And you to do that twice a week or something like that. So the tendency has been to, okay, we're going to discuss this political theory for this live stream. We're going to have this guest on. Didn't we, yeah. didn't we do a few live streams? Sure, yeah, yeah. Well, how, how long did we do it? Like, well, it's like yeah. half an hour, right? Like, No, we did hour, hour long live streams for sure. Yeah, but you yeah. know, it wasn't three hours. No, I know because no. I don't have time for three hour live streams. <laughs> I came from work straight to your place to do the live stream. And I had to actually sleep uh, so I could get to work the next yeah. day. Uh, what am I thinking about? There's this uh, other thing I'm thinking about. The thing that... <laughs> the thing that right-wingers on YouTube ended up doing, or right-wingers in general ended up doing, was reacting to everything that the left was doing. So they were saying, oh, well, look at the LGBTs now, look at the Antifers now. The issue was the fact that right-wing YouTube stared into the abyss too long. Mm -hmm. And it became the abyss. This whole ultra-serious, we're outraged, we have to do something, this is super urgent, everybody must be super serial about this all mm -hmm. the time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we must give them no quarter, and we must always be um, watching them. Mm. Who does this remind of you, you of? Left-wing YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> and ironically, left-wing YouTube actually went in the other direction, where they don't give us the time of day anymore. It is what it is. You'd stay into the abyss long enough, and I, I guess, unless you're me, you, uh, you, become, <laughs> uh, you, you become the abyss. Yeah. It, it swallows you. Yeah. Um, so where, where do you want to end off? Uh, I don't know, like, 
I've been. Uh, I'll tell you the truth. I've been. I was thinking for a while that you, if the direction you decided to take the channel in means that my participation was somewhat disruptive, I might have to put that video if I ever finish that video out somewhere else. But you know, like with we all want to see it. Okay, yeah, well, we all want to see. It. One of these days, uh, I, look, I'm gonna go with the Blizzard release schedule here. Like it'll be done when it's done, but you know, yeah. maybe eventually. Has there ever been a game where they delayed it? I'm sure there has, where they delayed it for many years and then finally they canceled it. No. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Not that that's what ha what's happening here either. We're just gonna keep delaying it. So. I don't think so. I, I'll get it done eventually, yeah. but. But I've got so many stuff I'm working on. Yeah. A lot of times it doesn't become the first priority. Yeah. But you know, like, uh, it'll get done eventually. And, you know, the other thing is some projects are easier to do than others. I, I get this perfectionism. You know, I, I was talking about the ESPN documentaries earlier, right? And it's yeah. like, where, where would I even begin if I wanted to do that? So. I actually, um, I don't feel that way at all. It's actually yeah. it's just... Yeah the audio editing and all of that I still haven't gotten the hang of it you know it's uh, kind of a pain to learn even though I have a more acceptable computer right now good finally because yeah. <laughs> I made a joke in the last video that I did with cousin Vinny that you're running uh, Windows 3 or something no it was uh, originally when we first started doing the show I was still running Windows XP and then yeah. the rig finally died and then <laughs> I managed to like dumpster dive for something that ran Vista which still makes me feel dirty <laughs> uh, then that died yeah. and uh, I managed to borrow someone's super old computer which was on Windows 7 for a while yeah now I'm now I'm we're on the same page. No, I'm <laughs> I'm still I'm still behind. I'm still on like uh, Windows 8 now. It's like terrible. But I think because seven actually seven's works, better. Than yeah, eight. works better than eight. <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, yeah, it's more the like I, I I don't like I don't like editing anything in general. Most people don't. I don't. Yeah, and yeah. it's like every time I realize I really gotta do it, I just like. Okay, suddenly this became my last priority. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't. I I really don't want to do this right yeah. now. Yeah. That's that's kind of what's holding up. Editing is just not fun. Yeah. Recording is fun. Mm -hmm. Editing is just the worst. And it, it varies from video to video because there are some, especially from in the early years, that were a lot of fun to edit, and I got to stick those memes in for one second. But there are also there are other conversations that were not fun to edit. Well, there's yeah. also ones where you know, like we have a really good recording, I think, and then you, you're like, okay, this is too fucking long. We have to cut out this whole conversation we had. That's actually interesting. That's yeah. kind of makes me like, oh, but that was that part was funny. Yeah. All right. Closing statements. Closing statements. A lot of things in the last number of years have been disruptive. Disruptive in a good way. You know, I got married. I had a kid. The whole Hong Kong back and forth thing. Becoming a Christian, that's very disruptive, actually. And this, right now, now the fact that I have to leave Vancouver and I don't even know when I'll be back, that's kind of disruptive, too. But the story of my life is disruptions, but then it working out. So people might look at the absolute state of this channel and be like, this guy's never going to... How, 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 <laughs> how will he ever recover? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I have faith. And even if the channel doesn't recover, that something better is going to... Happen. It's hard to be a Christian without having faith, I assume. <laughs> well, in terms of me, I'm just going to keep doing my thing. Yeah. I have a lot of stuff going on. Uh, ILL. Yeah. And um, YouTube's always been kind of just been for fun. Yeah. It will always be on my own terms. Yeah. It's always been on my own terms. Uh, I come by and I trash talk. And then you just, you edit the video and all of a sudden it's done. Like, you know, <laughs> that, that was great. Like, yeah, you had a good gig. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that was on my own terms. Yeah. And right now it's still on my own terms. I'll make a video and I'll edit it on my own terms. It will be done when it's done. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's all about me. <laughs> <laughs> well, um... You look very contemplative and confused. I, I'm thinking. <laughs> it's well, I'm thinking. To close with that I've said that. I feel. I feel like that wasn't quite the ending we were looking for. What ending were you fucking looking for? Um, I don't know. Something for the fans, I guess. Something. Like that. Okay. Okay. Fine. I'll give you a concession. I'll give you a concession. <laughs> yeah. The fact that even though I have to deal with this bullshit editing, because I can't leave this to anyone else. I have a vision in my head. Yeah. 
I have to get it like the way I want. Being someone who's just jumping into editing, even though you tried to like tell me to get into it six years ago, <laughs> this is hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the fact that I'm still wanting to do it, and I still think the final product will be fun for me, is because it's been very fun appearing on the channel all these years. And um, if not for the uh, fans, why would it be fun? Okay, yeah, there you go. But it is yeah. still uh, just all about me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's another thing that maybe people can take away as well, is that if the internet is causing you to kind of suffer and brood and stare into the abyss, you kind of have to balance that out. I know we all think that this, it's important <laughs> what we're doing. And but the plan, here comes the plan. But I've, I've, I've seen guys just go into the abyss and not come back. And that was something that I didn't want to... And I got a little taste of it, and I didn't want it. What, uh, what's worse, going into the light or going into the abyss? Uh, going into you... night light means you're, you're gonna die, right? Like, <laughs> oh. From a Christian perspective, death is nothing to fear. So. Alright. Look, I gave you a compromise. Yeah. Though it's still just about me. The fans is what makes this fun. Yeah. There, there you go. That's 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 the best I could. Yeah. We do this for you. What, what well, am I no, referencing? I, I, I do it for me, but yeah. yeah. I get the satisfaction because of you. Yeah. Yeah. Not you. Not you. <laughs> not, not Jeff McNukes, but, but the viewers. Okay. Right.